Senator Will Castro. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I want to begin by commending Attorney Neil Weir and Attorney Leaving Camacho for taking on this tremendous burden of what some can equate to taking on David versus Goliath, whether it's in defense of the folks of Illinois or Saipan or Guam or the entire Pacific Basin, Mr. Speaker. I don't see our united fight and united front against decolonization as an all or nothing approach, nor do I see my support of Resolution 27-34 as being mutually exclusive with that of decolonization. <clears throat> my history with that movement to decolonize goes back nearly three decades to the time of the late Senator Angel Santos, who personified what it meant to fight oppression in all forms, albeit political or economic, but certainly and unmistakably the fight against political imperialism. And I've read about past initiatives, and I also have the privilege to witness firsthand as an adult many a divided front where we have set ourselves back in this struggle to gain full recognition as a free people either as members of the union or hopefully one day mr speaker as a great and united chamorro nation let resolution 27-34 not be another such example of a defeated measure in hopes of a greater gain let us not sacrifice this part of a much greater whole this resolution, much like the plebiscite we're looking forward to for ourselves right here on Guam, is a resolve that needs a win. It is one step forward towards recognizing and affirming all citizens of the United States and their right to vote. To be succinct, that one's place of residence should not be the basis for denying any qualified United States citizen his or her right to vote. Instead, and in closing, Instead of waiting for that perfect play or that one strategy that was alluded to earlier, because I haven't seen one. And frankly, if there was one such strategy, Mr. Speaker, we wouldn't have this debate right here and right now. Instead, let us commit to moving this political football forward one hard earned yard at a time. In my humble opinion, Resolution 27-34 attempts to do just that. Myla Zatafahita Motna. Zatafakudi but sangi, lo tafanhita motna, kumo uno, sa uno hat na enemigo. Let us fight, together or apart. But let us fight for the same noble reasons and against our common enemy, oppression. Let us not fight each other because the paths we choose are different. Let us, let us instead, Mr. Speaker, take a path if we must towards the same end goal. In other contexts, if I can paraphrase in the words of the late Senator Angel Santos, sovereignty, self-determination, human rights means nothing if all we're going to do is talk about it. At the very least, the endorsement of Resolution 27-34 will heighten the national consciousness and it will enhance international awareness. I was going to end there, but I'd like to address a couple points on the floor. I agree that perhaps within the American paradigm, the United States Congress holds that unique privilege to grant us citizenship. Since 1898, I think we've got a brief history lesson, Mr. Speaker. But I'm not going to wait another 117 years, and I'm certainly not going to play by those rules if we have to wait that much longer. I agree. Let us not act hastily, Mr. Speaker. But I do not want to armchair quarterback this I think I've waited way too long to be given the opportunity to fight and be that active voice for this great Chamorro nation. And to another point that was made earlier on the floor, separate and apart from the body of my, of my commentary, Mr. Speaker, frankly, 
frankly, I'm less concerned about what, other, what others think after we say what we feel and do what we say. Ang ginsi niya, Debbie no hoku, togu siya sa agungo, itelefon ho, sa tafan sa kloro, hafagwagi hinasoku, sa gikurason ho. Sisus maasik po esti no opportunidad, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Castro.